from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 6 a.m., an estimated 37 million people are expected to travel over the long holiday weekend. What you should know, how you should be prepared if you are one of them. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a busy, busy night in the weather department. 67 degrees to start your Saturday morning. We're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey with what we've seen in the last 24 hours and what we can expect for the rest of the weekend. We're also going to check in with outages. But for now, good morning. I'm Max Massey, 6 o'clock this Saturday, May 29th. And I'm Sarah Costa. Yeah, last night, it, I mean, my house was shaking around 945. Mm -hmm. That thunder, that lightning, the wind. I mean, it was intense. And I, I got it, woken up with the emergency alerts. Yeah, I had some minor flooding in the front of my street. And I know kind of all over the city, and Sarah Spivey will explain that in just a bit. Mm -hmm. But if you were like us, who were probably woken up by the rain, the storms, maybe even an emergency alert on your phone, like Max just mentioned, last night San Antonio received quite a bit of rain and wind, even caused some issues with, it, with the power outages throughout the city. And this morning, let's take a look at those who still don't have power. 300 and, 371 active outages with 26,738 customers affected. We know that CPS Energy has people working around the clock to get those uh, power lines and outages back up and running and Sarah Spivey continues to track the radar this morning. Good morning. Sarah. Yeah, good morning. We have another round of rain that's moving through Bear County at the moment. A line of storms, which is severe for areas uh, just to the west, east rather of Eagle Pass and west of Crystal City, uh, is bringing some additional rainfall to San Antonio with some additional lightning as well. In fact, I'll go ahead and turn on the lightning here. We'll zoom in uh, around Bear County, uh, Lackland Air Force space Palo Alto College uh, the south side of Bear County even out to the west side SeaWorld getting a flash of lightning as well so those CPS workers they're gonna have a little bit of extra trouble this morning trying to restore power uh, just because we're continuing to see another round of rainfall now this is not going to be a severe round of rainfall uh, we are not going to be dealing with the winds like we did last night last night a 77 mile per hour wind gust reported at San Antonio International Airport. We are not going to have to worry about the severe weather in San Antonio. However, because the ground is so saturated, we are going to run into some issues, I believe, with ponding on the roadways as people are trying to head out early this morning uh, for Memorial Day weekend. As I put a play on this, you can notice that the heaviest part of this storm, which is out in Medina County, affecting Hondo, Divine, down toward Pearsall, uh, and the southern part of Medina County here, the heaviest portion of this storm is going to move southeast, avoiding San Antonio as a whole, but affecting Atascosa County. Areas like Charlotte, Jordanton, Pleasanton, Petite, going to get the bulk of the heavier rainfall that's currently occurring right now in Medina County. Now, the good news is this rain is expected to generally end by mid-morning, so I'm going to say close to 10 o'clock. We'll see the rain start to really move on out of the area, and it's going to be a fairly quiet Memorial Day weekend after we can get through another soggy round of storms. So coming up more in depth, look at the radar here. We'll talk about the severe thunderstorm warning out in Maverick County and we'll talk about how much rain we've seen so far and look at some of the damage pictures from last night. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest this morning, a San Antonio man filing a lawsuit against CPS Energy after his home was destroyed in an explosion. So take a look. This is the picture of the property on Highland Boulevard where Paul Mason lived, released by his attorneys working on the case. The suit alleges the blast happened after Mason lit a cigarette and Mason says CPS Energy was negligent in the upkeep of the natural gas lines to the home. Cameras were rolling when firefighters responded to the fire in May of last year. According to court documents, Mason underwent seven surgeries since the explosion. He now has to learn how to walk and feed himself. The lawsuit seeking $1 million in damages. CPS Energy responded saying, quote, they do not have a notice of the lawsuit. If we receive notice of it, we will handle this matter through litigation process, end quote. When it comes to the runoff races for City Council District 2 
is heating up on the east side. Incumbent Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan going up against one of her former staffers, Jalen McKee Rodriguez. Several pastors endorsed Andrew Sullivan yesterday, saying they were pledging their personal support for her and were not representing any organizations. Her opponent, McKee Rodriguez, has been gathering his own endorsements. That includes groups like the Texas Organizing Project and high-profile figures like the Castro Brothers. But the race is also getting attention for some accusations of homophobia. And right now on KSAT.com, we have an article that goes into detail about those accusations and what comes next as Election Day approaches. Just click on the menu tab and go to the Vote 2021 section on KSAT.com. And remember, you don't have to wait until Election Day to vote. Polls are open. Uh, more than 11,000 people have voted early so far. Districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9 are all in a runoff. You can find a complete list of the polling locations and the hours throughout the weekend. Just head to KSAT.com. Early voting ends June 1st and Election Day for the runoff next Saturday, June 5th. Let's check where Bear County now stands when it comes to the coronavirus cases. Metro Health officials are reporting an increase of 138 new cases and two new deaths. Meanwhile, there are 145 people in our local hospitals. 49 of them are in the ICU and 20 are on ventilators. And the Memorial Day weekend travel rush is on and it's fueled by the vaccinations and an improving economy. Now, AAA estimates that 37 million people expected to travel at least 50 miles away from their home over this long holiday weekend. That's a 60% increase from the 23 million that hit the roads last year. ABC's Ty Hernandez has a story. It's expected to be one of the busiest travel weekends since the beginning of the pandemic. AAA estimates 37 million people will travel this weekend. 2.5 million travelers expected to take to the air, nearly six times more than this time last year. Masks still required while in airports and on planes. I'm hoping that the airlines are taking what the precautions, which they say they have. So we're actually excited. Four months after I took office, we're further along in this fight than anyone thought possible. Further along with the help of vaccinations, nearly 60% of eligible Americans getting at least one dose. And proof of their effectiveness? Seattle health officials say a majority of infections in that city are among people who are unvaccinated. Those officials warning people who haven't received their shot yet. If you're unvaccinated, your risk of COVID-19 is actually higher right now than it was last Memorial Day. California offering up $50 to the next 2 million people who get fully vaccinated. The cost of not getting vaccinated is exponentially incalculably higher. I don't think this, I know this, just ask the Treasury. And this weekend, one of the largest gatherings since the pandemic started. Over 135,000 fans expected to attend Sunday's Indy 500. There is nowhere else I would be. In Massachusetts, remaining COVID restrictions lifting today and the long-awaited guidance for summer camps. The CDC now saying children do not have to wear masks or even social distance if everyone is fully vaccinated. The guidance also specifying people should remain in the same small groups as much as possible. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Time now is 6.08, 68 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a local restaurant Ooh. is serving sizzling skillet ribeyes. We'll have a sneak peek in today's Texas Eats preview. Breakfast of champions right yeah. there. Perfect for Memorial Day weekend. Plus, thumbs and savings on an extended tax-free weekend. We're going to explain details on what you can find deals for and where you can find them. Checking in with live cam, 68 degrees out there. Maybe some raindrops on the camera lens there. Uh, Sarah Spivey tracking the radar for us this morning. She'll have her full report when she when we come back. Welcome back and happy long weekend. Memorial Day is here and the long weekend has become a weekend of sales. That's right. Retailers slash prices on a variety of goods from appliances to tech and home goods. That's right. Mark Austin tells us about some of the deals that you can take advantage of. Big name chains like Home Depot, Best Buy and Lowe's are among the retailers with deals this Memorial Day weekend. Website Tech Radar recently rounded up some of the big savings available. At Home Depot, you can save up to $100 on select tools to help you tackle those summer projects. At Lowe's, there are big savings on patio furniture. The chain also has discounted plenty of lawnmowers and other items. Kohl's has what it calls Memorial Day must-haves on sale. 
Everything from Stars and Stripes themed apparel to outdoor toys and games. And Amazon is celebrating Memorial Day with savings. A recent check found garden supplies and inflatable pools were among the items marked down. Mattresses are marked down at a variety of retailers. Dream Cloud, Mattress Firm, and Casper all have sales. For more on which retailers are running Memorial Day sales, check out the full story at techradar.com. Mark Austin, KSAT 12 News. And we also want to let you know that it's tax free weekend for a lot of energy and water saving items today through Monday. You can save the sales tax on a new fridge, dishwasher, washing machine, dryer, even a new faucet. And the outdoor section, Sarah, this is right up your alley. <laughs> mulch, soil compost, also part of the deal. There's some specifics, though, depending on what you're buying. Refrigerators must be under $2,000. A new AC unit has to be under $6,000. You can find all this information. So much more. Just head to KSAT.com. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be outside much using any well, of those gardening supplies, at least you know, while the ground is so saturated. This morning. This morning. Yeah. You know, this morning we have another round of storm sets moving through, although this round of storms is not severe, but it could lead to some flooding on the roadways. Uh, and uh, Unfortunately, that means a lot of people are out on the roadways this morning to travel for Memorial Day weekend. If you can postpone your travels until the mid morning, I would suggest to do so just because we could really see some ponding on the roadways. You can see just how much lightning is around uh, San Antonio and Bear County. It's only a few strikes, but you go out toward Hondo, Medina County, down to Divine, and even in northern Frio County, uh, we are seeing some gusty winds there. Hondo, the airport reported 46 seven mile per hour wind gusts, which is not technically severe, but it is enough to knock around some light patio furniture. You know, yesterday I mentioned this. We had a wind gust at the airport of 77 miles per hour, which is severe. Turning off the lightning here, zooming into some of these neighborhoods that are seeing some heavy downpours. JBSA Lackland, some heavy downpours. San Jose, Palo Alto College, down toward La Soya and Thelma. And then on the east western part of Bear County, the SeaWorld area, Stevens High School, Northwest Vista, John Jay High School area, Castroville, uh, and Lacoste, Medina Valley High School, and Atascosa. Those are the areas that are getting the heavy rain around Bear County right now. This is going to move to the east and we'll be left with some moderate rain shield through the uh, mid morning hours. Now, part of this storm is severe. Uh, it is down near uh, Maverick County, the eastern section of Maverick County, down to Carrizo Springs in western Crystal City. Concerned here for the potential for some uh, gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour. But again, around San Antonio, not really worried about severe weather this morning, just worried about some soggy conditions on the road and additional lightning. However, by sunrise, unfortunately, we are going to have some folks that are going to have to clean up from last night's severe storms. This is a look on the northeast side of town close to Kirby, uh, half of that tree and the driveway. And then this is right near UTSA. Unfortunately, this storm blew down the tree across the street. Look how close it was to that house. Unfortunately, some people are going to be cleaning up some messes this morning. Now we did see a good amount of rain yesterday, anywhere from one to two to even three inches of rainfall in spots. This is at Timberwood Park, more than two inches of rain right now outside at 67 and raining at the airport in the high res future cast. That shield of rain will move to the south again. will be clearing out probably around mid morning 10 o'clock and then even some sunshine in the afternoon. Only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm during the day. Day. So today, uh, 72 at 10, 40% chance for scattered rain as that starts to end into the afternoon, partly cloudy, 20% isolated, 84 for the high, which isn't too hot, but it is going to be muggy. And so you're going to feel every degree of that. And it's going to be humid all Memorial Day weekend long. And in fact, speaking of the rest of the weekend, Every day we're going to have a small chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm. So it'll be a mostly dry Memorial Day weekend after we can get through this morning's round of storms. Looking ahead to the week, though, scattered showers and storms back in the forecast Tuesday and Wednesday, an active weather pattern as we end May and head into June. All right, Sarah Spy, we got to hold off on the car washes. Yeah. Thanks so much. 617, 68 degrees out. Well, Rodney Hunter is a star on and off the court, but this past year has really tested his tenacity, perseverance still ahead on GMSA. What makes his story of success special and who he says has inspired him to help others? And after the break, it is Saturday. What does that mean? 
What does it mean, Max? <laughs> it's React Texas Eats. David Elder taking us inside a Northside Mexican restaurant, serving up Breakfast of Champions sizzling skillet ribeyes. Ooh, that looks good. Let's take a look at these lottery numbers. Pick three, eight, three, six, fireball, seven, daily, four, five, zero, seven, eight, fireball, five. And your cash five, four, 12, 14, 15, 35. Mega millions. I think it's up to $253 million. It's a, it's a big one. Are you checking right now? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> 10, 14, 20, 47, 70, big number 15, Mega Fire 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Grilled shrimp on the side, right? And it's very tender, it's very juicy. Oh yeah, you know, we, that. we prepare everything here and we season everything here. The steak and shrimp comes out bubbling hot. I mean, this thing is just screaming hot, has a nice little onion mixture that comes out on there as well, some hot peppers. So make sure when you get it, get some hot pepper, a little bit of shrimp, a little bit of steak all mixed together. Because if you just eat that pepper, it's gonna be real hot. Oh yeah. yeah. Give me some more love. <laughs> there you go. Steak and shrimp, one of the most classic combinations you can get out here. The parilla plate, perfect to be shared, all the cocktails to have fun. But if you want something a little more authentic, mm -hmm. you have all different kinds of enchiladas yes. as well, right? So we have five or six different kinds of enchiladas. We have the Don Adolfo's enchiladas, we have the uh, uh, enchiladas verdes, and we also have the ground beef enchiladas. Don Adolfo's enchiladas are, are, are prepared with fresh corn tortillas. Uh, they have chicken and they, have, they go over a, a white sauce Prepare here, fresh. I'm in. So, yep. Start the <laughs> the holiday weekend with a sizzling steak and a pie or something. They were showing. I mean, you need sweets. Yeah. You gotta start off on the sweet note. 622, 68 degrees out. Well, what would you do? Oh with a yes. Big insect. Oh, I saw this. Manu Raji. Called on you right before you went live. Ah, oh, my worst nightmare. <laughs> After the break, we're taking a look at how CNN correspondent handled the situation. Good morning and welcome back. So if you've been listening, we've told you over the past few weeks that billions or seemingly billions of cicadas <laughs> are emerging for the first time in 17 years. They are out and about in the entire East Coast, specifically Washington, D.C. area. And they're getting their airtime, too, including on Capitol Hill. Check out CNN's chief congressional correspondent, Manu Raju, when he noticed a cicada crawling onto his neck while he was live. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Cicada. What the hell? Do I have more on me? I don't see any more on me. Are they any of my hair? No, no, no. Oh. There's so much to this. What we didn't see here and what we see in the original clip, you can see it going up his lapel, crawling behind. And like he brought up, he's like, why wouldn't anyone tell me? Why wouldn't yeah, a producer I would be or anyone tell me? I'm pretty mad at my me? photographer for not telling me that. Oh my um, that's our worst fear when we're out there. But it's funny because isn't he inside? Yeah. It must have just, you know, got a ride, got a ride inside, you know? Uh, have you had a situation like that? I mean, I've stepped on ants. Uh, fire ants. Mm. That was not fun. I had a fly on my face during a live interview once. Did anyone was, say anything? No one said anything. And oh, it was, it was just like the, the fly during the... Uh, the debate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this was a clear cut on my face. Anyway, power through. 627, 68 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, a woman is banned from Southwest Airlines after she reportedly knocked a flight attendant's two front teeth out. What the airline's flight attendant union had to say about the incident. A shooting mid-highway on the city's north side leads to terror and death. Multiple people were shot, but exactly how many died? We have that information directly from Chief McManus just ahead here on GMSA. A very busy, active night across San Antonio. Good morning. Welcome back. 6.30 this Saturday, May 29th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. For a lot of us, it was a loud night. It was a loud night, and I know a lot of us lost power, so let's go ahead and take a look at these outages. 366 active outages, 26,880, 7,000. I know Sarah Spivey was saying that's an improvement. It was in the 30,000s last night, um, and that's just because of these crazy winds. Uh, Sarah, you said at the airport at 1.77 mile-per-hour winds? 
Yep, a 77 mile per hour wind gust was reported at the airport. Now it's important to note that most of the power outages are north of Highway 90 because north of Highway 90 is where we had those very high winds, a lot of lightning last night, and we're still dealing with some rain in the area. A lot of folks out this morning uh, traveling probably for Memorial Day weekend. This is 281 at Grayson. You can see just how wet the roads are. 410 at Fredericksburg. Off in the distance, we've also seen flashes of lightning because there still are some areas of lightning out there. If you're going to be traveling this morning, uh, say up to Dallas, out toward Houston, even down to South Padre Island, know that you are going to be running into some storms. So just take your time, drive to the conditions, and not the uh, uh, posted speed. It's just a good idea to drive to the conditions. Partly cloudy though in Port A and in El Paso it'll be sunny. Here's a current look at the radar and we'll go ahead and take a look at where the heaviest rains are around San Antonio. Again, remember yesterday it was areas north of Highway 90 that got the damaging wind gusts, the frequent lightning and a lot of rain. Areas south of Highway 90 got some rain, but they can afford to see this heavier rain that you're seeing right now in areas like Mitchell Lake, Lackland Air Force Base, man crossing Somerset uh, and Oak Island as well as La Soya. But even heavier rainfall falling in Atascosa County right now with some gusty winds potentially for Petite, Charlotte, Jordanton, and Pleasanton coming your way. This part of the line is moving to the south and to the east. So the heaviest, heaviest rain with the gusty winds is going to avoid San Antonio. Again, right now we are not concerned about severe weather other than the potential for those lightning strikes to take out a little bit more power in the area south of Highway 90. One thing I want to show you is just how much rain we've seen in the last 20 24 hours around Bear County. It's been impressive and this is why this morning we're a little concerned about the potential for uh, some flooding and some ponding on the roadways. In the northern section of Bear County, some areas have seen two, three inches of rain like Wilverde Timberwood Park area at the airport. Officially, we saw a little bit more than an inch of rainfall. Uh, and again, these southern areas starting to fill in with the rain. So coming up, we've got a lot to talk about, including when we're going to clear out and what the rest of Memorial Day weekend will look like. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating a double murder that happened on the city's north side. Police called out to the 3300 block of Fallen Leaf Lane. All this happening around 240, and they were called out there for reports of shots fired on the highway. Now, according to the San Antonio Police Chief William McManus, four people were in the car, three women and one man. And according to police, all were shot. And unfortunately, two of the passengers in the back seat were pronounced dead at the scene. The police say the crime scene spread throughout several blocks, going as far back as I-10, and they are still looking for who is responsible. Alicia Barrett joins us live. Alicia? Hey, good morning. So you get a better idea of where we're at. We're off Callahan Road, maybe about half a mile down I-10, but where the scene, one of the scenes is just down the road here in this neighborhood. So if you take a look on your screen, you'll see that map there. The vehicle ended up crashing in the neighborhood on Fallen Leaf Lane, but police say the crime scene is actually spread throughout several blocks going as far back as I-10. According to Chief Will and McManus, the call for a shooting came in around 2.40 this morning. Chief McManus says they have very limited information on the suspect, but here's what we know about the victim's vehicle. Again, four people were in the car, three women, one man, and according to chief, the chief of police, every single one of them was shot. The driver of that vehicle ended up crashing in this neighborhood, and police say that 33-year-old male victim ran out to a neighbor's home to ask for help. That's when police were called. Two women were in the back seat, and unfortunately, again, both were pronounced dead at the scene. So what exactly led to this shooting? Well, that's still under investigation. There isn't an exact cause, but police tell us they know that this definitely isn't a random shooting so far. Police say that an altercation led up to all of this. And they do believe that the two parties involved more than likely knew each other. But again, that suspect this morning is still on the run. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, in your latest news, investigators tell us a man has confessed to murder. According to an arrest affidavit, a arrest warrant, 36-year-old Andres Perez Tarnava 
The third admitted to killing Marisol Kingelhofer. She was first reported missing in Bear County early this month. Documents say Ternarva accused Kingelhofer of stealing items that belonged to his father who had passed away. Investigators say Ternarva received a phone call notifying him where the victim was. An arrest warrant says Kingelhofer was then shot, dismembered and burned before her remains were hidden away in barrels. Ternava has a criminal background and is described as a documented gang member. Well, San Antonio man working hard to help victims of domestic violence after multiple incidents in just the last week. So Michael Shacklesford says he was driving on Northwest Loop 410 when a woman tried to shout out for help from the backseat of a vehicle. Just the day before, police say 30 year old Samantha Lopez shot and killed in front of her three children on Harlow Drive. And on Wednesday, a possible domestic violence situation ultimately ended with a standoff at the Thompson Place Apartments. The founder of Chain Breakers, an organization aimed at ending the chain of domestic violence, says it is so important to remind people there is help out there. We just want people to know, males and females alike, that they're not alone, uh, that we are here to help, whether you know, like I said, with any law enforcement agency, the last thing that we want to have to happen is for us to have to search for somebody. Shackleford, who captured the images through his dash cam, says he has since started raising funds to support the San Antonio battered women and children's shelter, and he encourages others to do so directly. In your morning headlines, a woman accused of hitting a flight attendant on a Southwest flight will not be flying with that airline again. Southwest has permanently banned her. The altercation happened after the flight from Sacramento landed in San Diego last Sunday. Southwest says the woman knocked the flight attendant's two front teeth out. The airline's flight attendant union says it has never seen this level of hostility among passengers before. The Federal Aviation Administration enacted a zero tolerance policy in January. And over in Arizona, a wildfire that sparked Thursday burned more than 20 structures and forcing the evacuation of an entire town. So video showing the charred remains of several structures, including 13 homes. The flames fueled mainly by dry grass and brush. Arizona State Forestry says forward progress of the spur fire was stopped Thursday night. The evacuation order for the town not lifted until yesterday afternoon. The initial investigation shows the blaze may have been started by road construction. And migrants continue to make their way to the U.S.-Mexico border at a pace that's held steady for a couple of months now. Data from U.S. Customs and Border Protection shows an average of about 40,000 migrants arriving per week. But that number continues to strain resources as well as put the migrants themselves in danger. According to the Department of Homeland Security official, April marked the highest one month total of migrants to the, to arrive at the border in two decades, nearly 180,000. Time now is 639, 68 degrees out. The price of chicken wings is Whoa. on the rise. Suppliers are facing a shortage and customers are eating the cost. Still ahead, what's led to the drop in supply and what to expect in the months ahead. Just in time for the NBA playoffs. Speaking of good basketball players, St. Mary's Hall student continues to set the bar high in and outside the classroom, on and off the court. After the break, we're introducing you to our latest great graduate who says he just wants to give back to those in need. 68 degrees at 6.30 this morning. I mean, uh, it, it looks like it's raining in that camera, but it's kind of been drizzling and raining all morning long. Sarah Spivey will have the latest from the radar when we come back. Welcome back. This last year has been a whirlwind for so many reasons and students across the country and across the world have had to overcome obstacle after obstacle to succeed. So in this morning's great graduate segment, we are introducing you to Rodney Hunter of St. Mary's Hall, who continues to thrive. It's been difficult, been really weird. Meet Rodney, a star on and off the basketball court. But this past year with everything going on has really tested his tenacity and his perseverance. It's difficult to watch, you know, because of it's been going on for so many years, but it, it, it really hit home because, you know, my parents, um, their parents, and they've all seen similar stuff like this. And it, it, um, it really affected me because of how my parents thought about it. When Rodney isn't focused on his game, his grades, or his time with St. Mary's Hall Investing Club, he's working to help out others. I'm blessed, and a lot of people don't have what I have. So 
I always like to, to, to do my best to give back to the people who are, you know, not as blessed as me. Part of what inspires him is his family, specifically his mother. She is now the CEO of Sam Ministries, a nonprofit here in San Antonio, but it wasn't always like that. And his family is what pushes him to be better. I'm the oldest sibling, so it puts pressure on me to, you know, be the example for my three younger ones, you know. I want them to be better than what I am, so I have to show them what it takes to be better than what I am. Rodney continues to set the bar high. He is set to take his talents to Kerrville. Next year, I am gonna attend Shriner University. Um, I'm gonna play basketball and major in data analytics. There was a lot to that interview. First off, shout out to Rodney because he didn't miss a he three. He was playing in loafers. He was killing it in loafers. And they're like, do you want to take some shots? I was like, not after that performance. Nah. But here's the interesting part. He tells me as far as his future after Shriner, he loves math. He's looking into forensic accounting and data analytics. So way over my head. Oh, my gosh. Way to go, Rodney. Congratulations. Go. All right. Checking in with Sarah Spivey, a loud... Somewhat chaotic night. Yeah. How's the morning looking? Uh, well, we are still dealing with some showers and storms in the area, but no severe weather. So that's some good news for us. But this was the picture last night. This is out in Bernie, outside of the Bernie AMC movie theater. You can see the flooding in the parking lot there. We had some flash flooding all around. And then on top of that, we also had uh, some very gusty winds. Wind gusts of 77 miles per hour recorded at the airport. This here was out near Utah. TSA and you can see that the strong winds took out a huge chunk of that pear tree. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people will be cleaning up this morning after the rain stops and the rain will stop eventually, uh, but we do have to get through another round of showers and even a few storms, few flashes of lightning as well. We'll go ahead and put a pause on this just so that we can see things a little bit better. Uh, around Bear County and around San Antonio. Anywhere you see these lines uh, is a flash of lightning. And you can see that there are still several flashes of lightning around San Antonio and around Bear County. A lot of folks, especially north of Highway 90, are without power. 26,000 customers still without power from uh, the wind damage yesterday and the lightning. The heaviest of the rain is following, falling in Atascosa County right now. Pleasanton, Jordanton, Petite, Charlotte, coming toward Campbellton. This complex is moving to the south and to the east, going to be moving into Live Oak County. Uh, and then we do have a shield of moderate rain uh, in Medina County and in Uvalde County, as well as up in the Hill Country in Bandera. Uh, this is good for Medina Lake uh, and in Kerrville and in Comfort as well. But around San Antonio, the heaviest of the rain is falling on the west side of town, uh, generally near SeaWorld, John Jay High School, Stevens, right along that outer loop uh, 1604. And on the south side, uh, south of Highway 90, near China Grove, Calaveras Lake, Hilltop, Mitchell Lake, and Palo Alto College. Again, this is slowly moving to the south and to the east. The heaviest of the rain will be out of the way, and then we'll just have to worry about moderate rain until about 10 o'clock this morning, and that's when things will start to clear out of here. Now, a dark view there uh, of our live cam, partially because some of uh, the power is out out there. 67 degrees with some rain at the airport. That shield of rain again moving to the southeast, and then today we'll actually see sunshine in the afternoon. During the day, today only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm after these morning showers and storms uh, 76 at noon warm 84 in the afternoon that might not seem that warm but it's going to feel warm because of the high humidity today and again only a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower east winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour it is going to be humid not only today but through the next seven days dew points will be oppressively high and that includes through uh, the rest of this memorial day weekend looking at your memorial day weekend only a 20 percent chance every day after this morning storms for an isolated shower or storm. So it should be a mostly dry Memorial Day weekend other than this morning. Just if you have travel plans early this morning, if you can wait, I would try to wait until the mid morning hours when locally the rain starts to taper off, but only isolated through Monday and then scattered showers and storms back in the forecast Tuesday and Wednesday. I know, I know, I know we're all sick of the rain and we definitely did not want the severe weather, but it's going to be July soon. It's going to be August soon. It's going to be hot and we're going to be grateful for this rain come that time.
All right. I'll take it. Thank There's you, Sarah. Five. Thank you so much. 649, 68 degrees out. Well, still ahead, stamps at the USPS could cost you more this year. Why they may be increasing and by how much, that's next. Good morning and welcome back. Some big consumer news to tell you about, especially if you like using the mail. The USPS, the Postal Service, wants to raise the price of stamps. Stamp prices have been steadily rising over the past few years. Mailing a letter cost 49 cents in 2017. Now it's at 55 cents. The USPS proposed raising the cost of mailing a letter to 58 cents. It comes in response to lagging mail volume and as Postmaster General Louis DeJoy pursue sweeping changes with an eye on the agency's finances. If the price increase is approved by the Postal Regulatory Commission, it would take effect on August 29th. All right, and from mail to the computers, Google facing a class action lawsuit over claims it paid female employees nearly $17,000 less per year than male employees for the same work. A judge certified the lawsuit on Thursday. That lawsuit brought on behalf of 10,800 women. They are seeking over $600 million in damages. Now, Google says for the past eight years, it has conducted analysis to ensure salaries, bonuses, and equity awards are all fair. A lawyer representing the women said the next step is to get the case to trial, which could happen in 2022. Well, the price of chicken is going up and restaurants that serve up wings are hit especially hard. That's right. 12 on your size. Marilyn Moore, it says you can blame the tight supplies on a number of factors. Most most recently because the pandemic has the supply chain of chicken out of whack. The lunch rush is on at Wayne's Wings and the orders are flying. But for owner Dwayne Price, chicken costs are plucking his profit margin. The prices have skyrocketed. Some of the suppliers are also limiting the amounts that we can buy. So he's had to raise his menu prices. The increase in the price, it affects not just me, it affects the customers, like, mainly. And, um, you know, that's what... That's what's hurting us right now. It's so what happened to all the chicken? Turns out it's another pandemic effect. The supply just isn't keeping pace with our appetite. What we'd like to have is more. Agriculture economist Dr. David Anderson says the pandemic forced some processors to cut production. And now all of a sudden we've got, gosh, the economy's growing. People are getting out there, going back to restaurants and everybody likes chicken wings and chicken breasts are everywhere with, you know, the breaded chicken sandwiches. A surge in demand goosed prices up. A year ago, the wholesale price for a pound of wings was $1.69, now $3.35. Breasts that were $1.44 a pound are now $2.25. Higher prices are the signal to make more chicken. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, it, you know, it's biology. It just takes some time. Adding to the challenge, labor shortages and high feed prices. As for your groceries, Anderson says the stores have plenty of chicken, but expect higher prices. And for this business owner, he's focused on keeping his customers. And while the cost of chicken is sky high, he may just have to wing it. Maybe we should do some seafood, you know. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> Way to adapt. I know. Wayne, really ready to go. I love wings. Time now, it's 6.55, 68 degrees out. Well, let's take a look at the news you need to know before you go, right after the break. A shootout mid-highway this morning on the city's north side leads to terror. Multiple people shot and two dead. Police responded to the 3300 block of Fallen Leaf Lane around 2.40 this morning, just off Callahan Road, for reports of shots fired on the highway. According to Chief William McManus, four people were in the car, three women and one man, and the driver of that vehicle ended up crashing in a neighborhood. Police say the 33-year-old male victim ran out to a neighbor's home to ask for help. That's when police were called. Unfortunately, the two backseat passengers were pronounced dead at the scene. Police say the crime scene actually spreads back a couple of blocks going as far back as I-10. And at this hour, the shooter is still on the run. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, again, we are still seeing moderate rainfall around San Antonio. Flashes of lightning, too. We're not worried about severe weather, but there is going to be ponding on those roads. Heavier rain is in Atascosa County right now, and you can see that it is clearing out in Concan, and so we will see this move away by the mid-morning hours. Then the rest of Memorial Day weekend will only feature isolated rain. It'll be 
hot and muggy all weekend long. Scattered showers and storms return Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'll return during GMA to give you a look at the radar. All right, we're <laughs> going to see you Sarah. back here at 8 a.m. Just checking CPS, 22,000 calls. For me night last night, 77 mile per hour wind gusts reported at the airport still 20,000 plus people without power and this morning we've got moderate rain moving in. Now this is spread out enough to where we're not really concerned about major flooding issues, but there are still flashes of lightning out there. A look as people are heading out on the roads. This is 1604 Tranco 281 in San Pedro. Be careful out there this morning. We will see the rain clear out by the mid morning in the afternoon. 84 degrees. Well, good Saturday morning to you. It was an eventful night last night with a 77 mile per hour wind gust reported at the airport. Trees across San Antonio north of Highway 90 have toppled like this red oak that fell into this person's roof uh, near the airport area. So unfortunately, there are going to be quite a few folks cleaning up and still 20,000 customers from CPS without power this morning and it is still raining moderate rain a few flashes of lightning out there as well but we're not worried about severe weather and as you can see this is actually starting to uh, wane away and so by the middle of the morning hours we'll be done with the rain only an isolated shower or storm possible this afternoon it'll be 84 degrees and then looking to the rest of Memorial Day weekend both tomorrow and Monday we are going to have a small chance for rain but for the most part after this morning showers and storms, it should be a fairly quiet Memorial Day weekend. Rain out there, moderate showers, a few flashes of lightning, but no severe weather. And you can see that there is an end in sight. Now for the rest of the day today, we'll be seeing some clearing after 10, a high temperature of 84, only a 20% chance for a storm. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A stolen truck, a chase, a crash, and gunshots. We have the latest information from police about a wild ride and how one man tried to chase down the people who stole his vehicle. Plus, San Antonio police are searching for a man suspected of robbing a Home Depot. Take a look at an, on your screen what police say he did to get away with the goods and how you can help. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Talk about a wild ride. We had a wild night. We got notifications on the phones. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, tell you what the rest of the day, rest of the weekend is going to look like. But for now, good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, May 29th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Yeah, at 9.45, Ooh. my phone went off. I jumped out of bed. The house was shaking. My, Lightning, my dogs thunder. were scared of that loud. The thunder was so loud. We actually just heard a little bit of that loud thunder again. And Sarah Spivey has been tracking the radar for us all morning long. Sarah, is, yeah. are things going to eventually fizzle out throughout the day? They are. And in fact, you can see that they're fizzling out right now near Kerrville and in Bandera County. Uh, but we are still dealing with some moderate rain in areas, even a couple of flashes of lightning still around here. Uh, but the heaviest rain is well south of San Antonio toward Beeville. It's been raining steadily in Atascosa County as well. A moderate shield of rain for Leon Valley. SeaWorld area, Lackland Air Force Base, Palo Alto College, even up toward Bulverde uh, and Bernie. But again, we do have that clearing line there, uh, generally moving to the south at about 35 miles per hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to track that clearing line, tell you when you can expect to see uh, this clearing out of the area. So it should be able to start to clear uh, in Bernie just within the next 30 minutes, close to the rim, closer to nine o'clock this morning around Brandeis High School around that time as well. So we are going to see an end to the rain uh, from uh, the uh, rain that we've seen pretty continuously. Even last night, the big damage was from the wind gusts, a 77 mile per hour wind gust reported at the airport that did some damage, knocked over some trees. And of course, still at last check, more than 20,000 people without power, uh, which of course CPS is working to restore that power. This is I-10 at 35. This is 281 at the quarry. A lot of people heading out uh, to start their Memorial Day weekend. Just be careful on the roads, drive to the conditions, 
and not the speed limit. As far as Texas travel goes, if you're heading up to Dallas, you will have to deal with some scattered storms. Houston evening storms, South Padre scattered storms, but Port SA it's going to be partly cloudy in El Paso. It'll be partly cloudy and toasty 97 degrees in El Paso today. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to recap last night, show you some pictures of some damage and talk about rainfall totals. Of course, we'll also talk about the rest of your Memorial Day weekend and the fact that it's going to be pretty nice after all. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And like Sarah just mentioned, with the rain and wind yeah. comes power outages this morning. Some people still without power. That's right. So if you don't have power, you are not the only one right now. 437 active outages. More than 14,000 people, more than 14,000 customers without power. That's a big decrease. Last night yeah. we saw more than 30,000 people. Earlier this morning we had about 26, 27,000. We know CPS crews out and about doing their best to try to get the power back on for everybody. And speaking of the power outages, speaking of what Sarah Spivey has been telling us throughout the morning, a lot of effects from the storms overnight. You know, still some without power still have to pick up and repair a lot of damage out there. Yeah, our Alicia Beretta is live at Al Almo Heights where one home sustained some serious damage. Alicia, what are you seeing out there? Well, in this neighborhood, so we're near Alamo Heights High School. That way you get a better idea. We saw a lot of tree limbs on in the middle of the ground, but here in this particular house, a lot of damage just in this back patio here. Um, you can see just how bad it is, but let me tell you, it gets worse. Let's swing around the back over here. We do have permission from the homeowner to be here. We spoke to some neighbors and they say what they heard was pretty scary, but what they're seeing this morning, even worse. This Spanish oak tree that you're about to see over here to your right, fell from the neighbor's home into this yard that you're seeing. So that's the neighbor's home. This, the tree fell over here onto the roof. So this area that you're seeing is actually the bedroom. So you can imagine how terrifying this was for the homeowner. The homeowner was inside and we have uh, pictures submitted to our app and that's how we were able to see the damage from inside the home. And it's it's pretty bad. And we know that this roof was just repaired a few years ago, and that's probably what saves the homeowner. And we'll have more information on how they're doing uh, where they are now later on in the newscast. But this is pretty scary. I mean, I, personally, Max, Sarah, I don't live too far from here. And I remember, um, Sarah, I heard you mention it. You woke up house shaking. That's exactly what it sounded like. Um, it was so, so scary. This was probably around like midnight. So perhaps this is some of the uh, that happened around that time. So we're still waiting to hear that information directly from the homeowner exactly what time this this all happened. But you can see over here that fence knocked down tree totally down uprooted. So we're going to try to speak to the neighbors over here on on this side um, to just see how things look on their side. But Alamo Heights area got hit pretty hard. We're going to be here all morning. Max Sarah, back to you. Alicia, thank you. And our viewers keep sending in those pictures at our KSAT Authority weather app in the pin section. And also new this morning, a man is in the hospital after trying to chase down the suspects who stole his truck. Police tell us around 2.30 this morning, a man saw two suspects stealing his pickup at his apartment complex near McCullen El Monte. The victim immediately jumped into his other vehicle and chased down the suspects. The two suspects noticed the man following them. They turned around, they turned the pickup around toward the victim and slammed into his SUV. The suspects jumped out of the pickup and then fired several shots toward the victim. One grazed the victim in the head. He is expected to be okay. After the gunfire, the suspects ran off and police are still searching for them. And San Antonio police at Crime Stoppers asking for your help trying to find a man who they say robbed a Home Depot on the city's northeast side last month. This all happened on April 27th at the Home Depot on Cambrai Drive. Police tell us the man entered the store, threatened employees with a gun, stole several items. That suspect then took off in this white pickup truck that you see on your screen. If you have any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number also on your screen, 210-224-STOP. We continue our coronavirus coverage here at home. City health officials reported 138 new COVID-19 cases in Bear County. They also say two more people have died from the virus. That brings our death toll to 3,459 total since the start of the pandemic. And Metro Health is also reporting 145 people in our local hospitals with 49 in the ICU and 20 on ventilators. More than 718,000 people in Bear County are fully vaccinated. 
Time now is 8.07, 67 degrees out. In our next half hour, we tell you about a social bike riding group and what they are doing to raise awareness about bike safety in our city. And do you get robocalls? All the time. They are the worst. So do you want to feel comfortable answering your phone again without worrying if it's a robocall? We're going to have tips on how to leave the scammers hanging on the other end. Take a look outside at live cam at 67 degrees at 808 this morning. We saw Alicia look like she was still having some drizzle out in Alamo Heights, but Sarah Spivey tracking the radar for us. She'll have our full report when we come back. Well, one word, so many different explanations. This week's episode of Case Hat Explains is all about cryptocurrency. All right, so the show goes into what exactly cryptocurrency is, how it gets its value, and if it is the currency of the future. Case Hat producer Alex McLeod stepping into the breakdown booth, talking a little bit about the work that went into this expansive episode. Cryptocurrency. Where to begin with cryptocurrency? Um, that's actually the question many of us found ourselves asking whenever we decided that we were gonna, um, you know, make this an episode of Case Head Explains. Part of the appeal of doing this episode of Case Head Explains was learning for ourselves, you know, wanting to be part of the conversation. So when someone starts talking about a Bitcoin or a Dogecoin or, or, or how Elon Musk, uh, you know, affects cryptocurrency, um, then we would be able to, you know, participate in that conversation. I think going in to this episode of Case Set Explains, um, none of us, I guess, knew uh, how much there was going to be to explain. There's so many different components to cryptocurrency, so many terms that we had uh, to learn that were brand new to us, like Ethereum, um, again, like Bitcoining, mining, blockchain, like what the heck is a blockchain? Like, <laughs> I had no idea. And we found that, you know, the more and more we dug or, or, or you know, like mined into these concepts, there were new terms that we had to learn. Um, and it was, it was a never ending learning process, which is good for us and, and good for our viewers. Um, but it's, it, I had never really like researched something like this where there was no, you know, finite black and white answer to like, what is this? Um, cryptocurrency is constantly evolving. Even if you're not into cryptocurrency or are into, you know, buying bitcoins, I still think it's, it's, it's an interesting topic. And, you know, potentially this is the way of the future as far as currency and banking and, and, and everything is concerned. We don't really know where this is going, but we know how we got to where we are now and we can explain at least that much to you. So if you haven't already, check out the latest episode of KSAT Explains, The Digital Gold Rush, right now at KSAT.com or check it out on your KSAT TV app wherever you stream. Really great job. And our Sarah Spivey even made a little jingle for the episode. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. It was pretty fantastic. You know, we won't put you on the spot right now because I know you have point. some important things to yeah, get to, we, Sarah. Yeah, we've got to talk about the weather. That's what I'm... I'm professional, <laughs> all right. So we did have quite a bit of uh, storminess last night. Severe thunderstorms rolled through the area pretty much between 9 and 10 o'clock. And unfortunately, with a 77 mile per hour wind gust reported around the airport, it did some damage for some pretty mature trees. This is out uh, near the uh, UTSA area. That tree across the, blown across the street into a person's home. Of course, Alicia Bettis just showed us out in the Alamo Heights area the damage there. We've also got uh, some uh, flooding that was reported. This is outside of the Bernie AMC movie theater in the parking lot there. Some flash flooding in many areas last night as well with some high water rescues. But it did lead to some beneficial rainfall for many folks. Uh, in fact, this is out in Timberwood Park area. Uh, more than two inches of rain just from that storm that moved through. And it mainly affected areas generally north of Highway 90. But this morning we've had a steady stream of moderate rain. I want to show you some of these rainfall totals so far across areas around San Antonio. 
Again, the healthiest of the rain fell in areas uh, north of Highway 90, right around the Leon Springs area. More than two inches of rain near uh, Bulverde and Timberwood Park. Almost four inches of rain in parts of Comal County near New Braunfels. Almost three inches of rain officially at the airport in the last 24 hours. We've seen uh, more than one and a half inches of rain. And even the areas south of Highway 90 have seen a decent amount of rainfall in the last 24 hours or so. So some healthy rain out there uh, from last night and even this morning. Again, we're continuing to see some moderate rain, light to moderate rain, although it is starting to let up, which is some good news because we do want to salvage uh, some of our Memorial Day weekend, uh, putting this in motion you can see that it's starting to clear out there, uh, but the areas that are getting moderate rain right now, Lackland Air Force Base, Leon Valley, west of downtown San Antonio, uh, on the southern edge there of 1604. Uh, in a wider view, and you can see that we're really starting to see this clear out really nicely, uh, pushing play again. Uh, there's that clearing line. It's going to be through by 10. I think we're going to be done with the rain today for the most part here in San Antonio. Of course, down to the south, we still have some uh, good heavier rainfall south of Pearsall all the way to Dilly along 35. A few flashes of lightning there as well near Pleasanton, but the lightning generally is done around San Antonio. So uh, nice to see the rain starting to come to an end, but it will be soggy for the next couple of hours. At the airport, rain cool there, 67 degrees. Winds are from the south at about 5 miles miles per hour, but humidity is high and humidity is going to stay high today. That complex moving to the southeast and dissipating. And then in the afternoon, we will see some sun. Notice how there is a small chance 20% for a pop up shower or storm later this afternoon. Uh, but for the most part, after this morning rain, it should be nice and dry today. 76 at noon, 84 for the high temperature today, which is warm, but it'll feel closer to 90 because of the high humidity. So a little toasty east winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Staying humid all throughout the next week. Dew points in the 70s, which is you really feel that oppressive humidity. So it's going to be humid all Memorial Day weekend long uh, with only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm each day. Tomorrow and Monday, Memorial Day included as well. 85 degrees for the high temperature both tomorrow and Monday. And again, that high humidity is going to be a big factor, feeling more like in the low 90s in the afternoon because of that high humidity. We are not done with the rain yet. We've already seen more than five inches of rainfall for this month. Uh, and of course, as we go into June, we have another chance to see some good rain as well. 40% chance for scattered showers and storms on Tuesday and Wednesday. If you would like to send in your pictures to our KSAC Connect app, you can do it through the pin section. That really helps us with ground truth. And of course, we're thinking about everybody who has a lot of cleaning up to do because uh, of last night's high winds. Uh, again, some improvement on the CPS numbers. Last check, 14,000 people without power. That's still a lot of people, but it's an improvement from yesterday's 34,000. Yeah, and I know they're working around the clock to get those powers, power outages restored. Thank you, Sarah. 818, 67 degrees out. Well, if you're looking for your forever friend, today is a day Animal Care Services is hosting a kitty palooza mm. this weekend. Details just ahead. And who doesn't get annoyed with robocalls? Next, we actually have some tips on how to leave the scammers hanging. We're going to explain. Good morning and welcome back. Last year, robocalls dropped by 22% in the United States, the lowest in three years. And the reason is because international call centers were shut down during the pandemic. Well, government efforts to stop COVID-19 related scams also helped reduce the number of robocalls in 2020. But even with that decline, the U.S. consumers still receive 45.9 billion robocalls. Billion. Yeah, it's a lot. David Sears has details on how to avoid being part of that statistic. Hello? Hello? If you answer the phone and hear a recorded message instead of a live person, it's a robocall. I am giving you a Happens all the time. It's so frustrating. Over 8.6 billion robocalls have already been placed in the U.S. this year, and they will likely reach 51.5 billion by the end of the year.
Don't leave yourself exposed to costly repairs. Want to avoid robocalls? First, be aware of caller ID showing a local unknown number. Don't respond to any questions, especially those that can be answered with yes. If you have a voicemail account with your home phone service, if you have a voicemail account with your phone service, be sure to set a password for it. A hacker could hack your home phone number and gain access to your voicemail if you don't set a password. And how do you know if your incoming texts are real or robo? Is this real? How about this one? Both are robo. If the message has typos or poor grammar, requests urgent action, or contains a suspicious link, it's likely a scam. Your best action to take? Delete it. Other ways to avoid scammers, sign up for the FTC's National Do Not Call Registry. It's illegal for telemarketers to call you if you're on that list. For texts, you can copy the message and send them to 7726. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. I got a call to get on that list. I know. I Like five to six times a day. The worst. I know. All right. 824, 68 degrees out. Well, adorable kitty cats are looking for their forever home. Still ahead, we tell you about an adoption drive happening at Animal Care Services this weekend. Well, if you are looking for your perfect friend, we've got you covered. Just waiting all morning for that one. <laughs> All right, Animal Care Services hosting the Kitty Palooza Adoption Drive this weekend. ACS says their adoption fees will only be $15. Every adopted pet get vaccination, sterilization, deworming, and a microchip. That's right, the event happening today and tomorrow, and you don't even need an appointment. So are you going to get any cats? You know, I already have two dogs. Mm. Maybe, maybe an outside kitty. Oh, okay. Work. There you go. All right, time now is 827, 68 degrees out. Well, what would you do to get your dream job? Still okay. ahead in our next half hour, we explain oh. what some job applicants had to do to be considered for a job. There's a lot going on in there. Yeah. All right, a lot of people hitting the road from World Day weekend. The country is seeing high gas prices. What the experts are saying is the reason behind it. We're gonna explain. Good morning and welcome back. 8.30 this morning, Saturday, May 29th. Thank you so much for starting your morning for with us. And I got to say, it was tough to wake up this morning, but also it was tough to go to bed. Oh my gosh, I know. I was jolted out of bed. <laughs> the thunder, the lightning. The notifications. I know. And, and Sarah, t t t this night, tonight, or is it going to be the same? Things going to no. die down? We are actually seeing an end to the rain right now as we speak throughout San Antonio, which is good news. But as Max and Sarah were talking about last night, it was noisy. We had wind gusts of up to 77 miles per hour reported at the airport. Trees are down uh, north of Highway 90 in many spots. And this morning's been a bit soggy, too. We had plenty of lightning uh, as a storm complex is pushing down south toward Corpus Christi and eventually the Rio Grande Valley. But here around San Antonio, we're gradually starting to see the rain come to an end. In fact, it's ended for areas uh, along the western edge of 1604 there uh, here in San Antonio. And over the next hour and a half, we'll gradually see the rain come to an end for all of us this morning. Rain cool there, though, in place at 67 in San Antonio, 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 64 in comfort. But it is humid. In fact, dew points are right here with the temperatures. By the way, a lot of folks north of Highway 90 last night lost power. At one point, there were 34,000 customers without power. Now there are 10,000 customers without power, so some slow improvement there. Uh, but today for the rest of the day, uh, again, just a few scattered showers lingering around 10. Even into the afternoon, we do have to carry a 20% chance for an isolated pop-up shower or storm. But for the most part, today is going to be a day that we get to dry out uh, and it'll be toasty, a high temperature of 84, but a heat index in the 90s likely for us. We'll have east winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And coming up in the forecast, of course, we'll talk about some of the damage that's ongoing around uh, San Antonio rainfall totals and what you can expect for the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A mother and her young child in the hospital this morning after a head on collision, a scary crash. The driver believed to be responsible now detained for a possible DWI. Police were called out to the crash near the intersection of Gabbis and Zarzamora right around 11 last night. 
Now, police tell us two pickup trucks were in a minor crash on I-35. One was a Ford pickup, which then took off after that small crash, turned on to Zars and more, lost control, veered off into oncoming traffic. That driver crashed into another vehicle head on. A mother and her small child both taken to University Hospital. At last check, the mother in critical condition, son stable. The driver detained under suspicion of alcohol. Charges are pending, but that's not where it ended. An EMS headed to the scene, lost control, crashed into a fence. The two paramedics also taken to University Hospital for an evaluation. Well, police are searching for a person responsible for a shooting that ended with four people with gunshot wounds. Police tell us two involved were shot and killed. This was a scene around 240 this morning, the 3300 block of Fallen Leaf Lane. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says there were reports of a shooting between two cars on I-10. Four people in one of, in one of the car was shot. Two of them died. Police say the car ended up crashing on Fallen Leaf Lane. The crime scene has spread throughout several blocks as going as far back as I-10. The shooter and the other vehicle drove off. Police are still investigating, working to figure out how and why this all started. I want to remind you that early voting for the city's runoff election is still going on. More than 11,000 people have voted so far. Remember, districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9 are all in a runoff election for the city council spot. If you haven't voted yet, you can find a full list of those polling locations and the hours right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Early voting ends next Tuesday. Election Day is next Saturday. In your morning headlines, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office says the San Jose shooting suspect had more than 20,000 rounds of ammunition at his home. Investigators found 22,000 rounds of ammunition, a dozen firearms, suspected Mazeltov, Molotov cocktails, and multiple cans of gasoline. The Sheriff's Office says Sam Cassidy reportedly set the home on fire before driving to work. That's where he shot and killed nine people before shooting himself. Authorities are still trying to figure out the reason behind the shooting. And gas prices are soaring just as Americans hit the roads for the holiday weekend. That's right. ABC's Ellen Lopez has the latest. A majority of travelers this weekend will be on the roads. More than 34 million people are expected to go by car. And this comes as gas prices hit a seven year high. The national average jumping to a little over $3 a gallon in comparison to $1.96 last year. Experts say that's in part because of demand. With the lockdown finally lifting, we are starting to see those pre pandemic travel numbers creeping back up. The other factor that massive pipeline shutdown. Some of those gas stations hardest hit by crippling lines at the pumps, still recovering weeks later, including here in Georgia. So if you are traveling this weekend by car, make sure you check fuel availability in your area before you head out the door. All right, and we want to remind you something very important if you're out and about. TxDOT wants to remind you to buckle up this Memorial Day weekend. Law enforcement will be handing out tickets up to $200 for those who break the law. TxDOT says Crashes in San Antonio claimed 21 lives and 47 serious injuries last year. They say since starting the campaign, they've seen an increase in people wearing their seatbelt with 91%. Their goal, of course, is to get to 100%. All right, there you go. Click it or tick it. Mm -hmm. All right. 837, 67 degrees out. Well, coming up, we talk about bike safety and how one group is aiming to put a face to all those cyclists out there, we'll tell you more about that when we come back. And are you looking for a new adventure? What about learning how to hunt? Hmm, I'm intrigued. In our next half hour, we're going to tell you about a brand new program for beginning hunters. Take a look outside. 67 degrees at 837 this morning. Still looks like we have some, maybe some light showers out there, lingering showers. Sarah Spivey will have the full report when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. We know last night's storms brought in some crazy weather. We know rain, thunder, lightning, and some of the high winds were up to 77 miles per hour. It actually knocked over some trees, it left a lot without power. That's right. This morning, Alicia Beretta is looking at some of the damage in different areas. She's now at a neighborhood near Alamo Heights High School where things got pretty scary for one homeowner. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Scary to say the least. I can't imagine. I think I would have had a heart attack or near one after witnessing this. So this is a Spanish oak tree. It's completely uprooted. It's about 90 feet tall or was, but due to the high winds, it toppled over onto this neighbor's yards, causing what you see here, just a big mess. The tree landed on top of the home, crushing through the metal roof. I spoke to neighbors who tell me the homeowner was in her bedroom when she heard a loud sound and moments later saw a tree limb hanging down from the ceiling. Just take a look at what the damage looks like from inside. This picture was submitted by a neighbor through our case at Connect on the Weather Authority app. Definitely a scary and extremely close call for the homeowner who says that limb was just a few feet from where they were. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. It's unclear what steps will be taken next to carefully remove this tree. And I want to once again show you. So this is the this was the neighbor's tree. And then if we pan over here to the left, the the homeowner has a tree of, of their own over here that also cracked. So there's a lot of damage here this morning. Um, again, thankfully, no injuries. That homeowner is for now, for the next few hours, seeking refuge somewhere else uh, where it's a little safer. Reporting live from Alamo Heights, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Alicia, for that report. And thank you to the homeowner for allowing us to to see that damage because, you know, the radar can only see so much, right? It's your eyes and your ears and your pictures that help us see the ground truth of what happened yesterday. And last night we did have a confirmed 77 mile per hour wind gust reported at the airport. The winds were by far the most damaging thing about yesterday's severe storm. And even this morning, we've had some rain, some moderate rain at times. But as you can see, the rain is starting to come to an end around San Antonio. Uh, but we are still seeing some areas of moderate rain, mainly near Calaveras Lake right now and Elmendorf uh, near Hilltop uh, and uh, just close to those lakes at the moment, Calaveras Lake and Bronick Lake. This is the last of the moderate rain that's that's through Bear County uh, and near the the um AT&T Center there just to the uh, east of the AT&T Center. Still seeing some moderate rain in Floresville, Poth, Falls City, Pleasanton and Jordanton. It's just now uh, to the east of I-35. Uh, pardon me, I-37, but as you can see, it started to clear out. Leon Springs, it's clearing out there. Lotus, SeaWorld area, clearing out there as well. And in fact, I'll go ahead and put a little line on here and we'll track the clearing line. Uh, it should clear very soon for many folks, including uh, those around the Ingram Park Mall area, just within the next couple of minutes near Memorial High School around nine and near Hollywood Park around nine as well. So we are just just about done with the rain for the day today. The good news is even though we do have a chance for some isolated rain in the afternoons, uh, we are going to have a fairly quiet Memorial Day weekend. Other than that, small chance for an isolated shower or storm in the afternoon. So here's our weather pattern. A wider view here. If you have plans to travel across the state of Texas, I checked in with the airport, San Antonio International Airport. No major delays uh, out there right now. For many folks, if you're traveling on the roads, just I'd say the Ar Rio Grande Valley is going to be the difficult place to travel to uh, today, and that does include, you know, South Padre Island and those beaches there. But the rest of the state should be fairly quiet, at least as a general rule. Outside right now, uh, we are still recording some light rain at the airport, 67 degrees in the high res future cast. There goes that rain and into the afternoon we'll see some sun, but a few isolated showers and storms are possible. High temperatures are going to be in the mid 80s, 84 in San Antonio, closer to 90 in Catula, 91 in Del Rio. But go ahead and add five degrees to this because that's what it's going to feel like outside, feeling closer to 90. 76 at noon, 84 at 5 p.m., that 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Humid, 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 humid. We're not going to have any chance to see drier air move in. And so even though we are going to see the sun this Memorial Day weekend. We'll have morning clouds, afternoon sun, and a small chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm that does include Monday Memorial Day. 
all that said and done, you know, we had a lot of severe weather last night, uh, but I think the worst of it is through for us over the next few days. We do have some isolate, some scattered showers and storms possible rather on Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. Thanks again to Alicia Barrera for that report out in Alamo Heights of that tree down. So grateful that that family is okay. A scary situation out there. Absolutely. A lot of scary stuff out there. Thank you, Sarah. 846, 67 degrees out. Well, next on GMSA, we tell you about a social bike riding group and their campaign to wait to raise awareness about bike safety. San Antonio cyclists have had enough of the unsafe riding conditions in our city. That's right. Since 2015, at least 21 people have been hit and killed while riding their bikes across San Antonio. The majority of those crashes have been hit and runs. I spoke with the organizer of SATX Social Ride, a social bike riding group behind a campaign with the goal of putting human faces to our area riders. Tito Bradshaw, Dr. Naji K. Roos, and most recently Beatriz Gonzalez. All three were local cyclists that were struck and killed while riding their bikes on San Antonio streets. Police say the drivers in all three cases were drinking and driving. Those are just three cyclists out of 21 who have been struck and killed since 2015 while riding their bikes in the Alamo City. On top of that, nearly 2,000 cyclists have been hit and injured while riding their bikes on city streets. And local bike groups have had enough. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Just earlier this week, protesters gathered at the Bear County Courthouse. What was her name? Beatriz Gonzalez! Demanding that the driver who hit and killed 44-year-old Beatriz Gonzalez not get probation, but a harsher sentence. We're not going to let this go by again and let just let time forget. That's what they want us to do. They just want us to be here and just forget about everything and move on. But we're not going to do that. It's why a local social riding group, SATX Social Rides, started a photo campaign of more than 200 of their riders to show the community the faces of San Antonio cyclists. We wanted to put a human face to the cyclists that are out on the street. And there's always been kind of a, a misinformation or myth that it's really young kids or it's uh, upper middle class guys on $5,000 bikes and that's not, not the case really. In these pictures you can see grandparents, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters of all ages and all backgrounds. We've got grandparents, we've got students, we've got active duty military, retired military, white collar workers, blue collar workers, everything mixed together. Moore says the goal of this photo campaign is to raise awareness about bike safety, that San Antonio cyclists are not just objects in the way on the road, but your neighbors who are part of this community. He says so much more than just awareness campaigns need to be done to stop cyclists from being struck on our streets. Moore says local riders have been pushing city council members to put some safe cycling propositions on the next ballot in 2022. So we can have at least a few safe cycling highways, if you will, um, that are protected and off the streets. Um, and we want to have some um, public awareness campaign so that people will, will slow down a little bit and kind of pay attention. Moore says less distracted and drunk driving means less local cyclists being hit and killed. And Jeff Moore, who you just heard from, was honored on Thursday as Cycling Advocate of the Year by the local nonprofit Earn a Bike and the City. Moore is the founder of SATX Social Ride. He started the group several years ago. They meet at Burleson Yard every Tuesday at 7 p.m. to ride in large groups to make riders of all levels feel safe. He was honored by the nonprofit and the city for all of his efforts to make biking safer in San Antonio. At the ceremony, the mayor and the nonprofit recognized Moore for being at Cal Council meetings to represent the bike community and growing the riding community here. Also, May is National Bike Month. All right. I know a lot of city councilmen and women are working to make San Antonio a more bike friendly place. You start riding a lot. I do. And, you know, we have a great trail system here that connects all around the city. But what they're really fighting for are better lanes connecting those commuter lanes connecting to that trail system so you can get, a, you know, around the city. Keeping stuff. everyone safe. Exactly. All right. Time now, 853, 67 degrees out. Well, what would you say if you had to go zip lining in order to get a job? We'll tell you about it next. I'm in. Okay, so people interviewing for jobs at Slotzilla Zipline in Las Vegas had to actually try it out. That's right, it makes sense. If you're gonna be working there, you might as well know the product. Zipline is part of the Fremont Street Experience, an attraction that features gaming and entertainment in the heart of Vegas. At the end of the ride, after flying 12 stories high, 
they're told if they get the job or not. The president of the attraction calls the audition as Vegas as it gets. Call it terrifying. The chosen applicants' <laughs> names were also put up in lights on oh. the Viva Vision canopy. That's pretty cool, though. I, it, you know, I would probably do it for a live shot. But Unless, for I would definitely do it for a live for shot. For funsies, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it's almost embarrassing if you don't see your name up in lights, though. Y yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> What'd you do if KSAT was like, for the uh, job, yes, get the zip line? Absolutely. There you go. How Good much answer. I love KSAT. <laughs> All right, 57, 67 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA, making sure you get the best bang for your buck this Memorial Day weekend. The big price items you can get tax free. Plus, the CDC giving new guidance when it comes to a major cruise line. When you can expect to hop aboard a Carnival cruise ship, we're going to explain. All right, good morning. Welcome back. And there it is. Live look outside. It is calm and quiet now compared to what we've seen over the last 12 or so hours. You probably would have woken up from lightning, thunder, rain, wind, maybe even notifications on your phone. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. But until then, Good morning and welcome back. 9 a.m. this Saturday, May 29th. What a whirlwind yeah. the last 12 hours. Yeah, good morning. It, it, it's been crazy. You know, I had some uh, flooding in my backyard and in the front of my the front of my house just like instantly. I guess that's why they call it a flash flood, Sarah Spivey. <laughs> but let's take a look at these power outages. This number is good. All I right. know it's only it's 9,981 people. Last night, it was in the 30,000s. We've seen that number slowly go down throughout the morning. Just a half hour ago, it was around 14,000. So mm -hmm. this is a good number. CPS Energy working around the clock to get people's power restored. And Sarah, you said this is starting to kind of clear out a little bit. Yeah, it is starting to clear out uh, quite a bit. In fact, we're really only left with light rain and spots around San Antonio, which is good news because... We need a little break after yesterday's gusty winds. Winds gust up to 70, 77 miles per hour at the airport. Rain cool there right now, 66 degrees, 68 in New Braunfels, 65 in Hondo, 65 in Kerrville. And there goes the rain just completely starting to dissipate. Uh, we still do have quite a few storms uh, south near Corpus Christi, near Laredo, pushing toward the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, but around San Antonio, uh, those rains are starting to come to an end. Just some light rain out near New Braunfels on the eastern edge of 1604. A couple of sprinkles left around downtown San Antonio. And believe it or not, we're going to see the sun today. We're going to be able to see uh, skies clear right around lunch and into the afternoon. Now, unfortunately, the rain is leaving leaving behind uh, bad allergies, right? Mold is high past 8,000 uh, and there's going to be a lot of cleanup uh, around the city, especially north of Highway 90. We've seen lots of trees down in areas. More on that damage a little bit later. And of course, we'll talk rainfall totals. Max and Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. And as you've been saying, the rain starting to slow down in a large part of our viewing area. Still, we know a lot of people without power and a lot of people waking up to see some of the damage from the storms. Yeah, people are definitely cleaning up from last night. Sarah Spivey mentioned 77 mile per hour wind gusts measured at the airport last night. And our Alicia Bedetta live near that area near Alamo Heights where a tree toppled over a home. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. Well, I want to show you kind of what it looks like around this area driving through Alamo Heights. What we see is a lot of this. A lot of the tree limbs just scattered through the ground on the roadways, and it looks pretty bad on this patio. Just take a look at the, all the pile of, of limbs and trees over there. But if we make our way to the backyard, a neighbor's Spanish oak tree that we just confirmed is more than a hundred was more than a hundred feet tall, toppled over, landing on top of this home right here. So it actually uh, caused some damage. Actually, the, one of the limbs went through the roof. And so we want to show you what that looked like. This picture was submitted through the KSAT um, weather app. So a lot of damage. Um, the, the homeowner tells us that they were sleeping just about five feet from where that limb struck through the roof. So a lot of damage for the homeowners right now. We know that they are surveying, trying to talk to insurance companies to try to get it all figured out. Um, the neighbor we were speaking off camera shared with me that they were actually trying to see what they could do with this Spanish oak tree just a few years ago, about two years ago. But um, they had to go through a lot of hurdles. Nothing ever happened. It stayed in place until today. So it's causing major headaches for them this 
this morning. Uh, again, still trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen, when they'll be able to remove it. So this is the situation in Alamo Heights for this homeowner. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. A terrifying situation for another family on the north side after flames could be seen shooting through the roof. So take a look. This was a situation just after 2.30 this morning. This is the 2800 block of Stony Mist. Firefighters spending parts of the early morning battling this blaze. Now we're told the home a complete loss. Luckily, though, no one was injured. The family at the home at the time of the fire, they all made it out safely. Arson investigators were called to the scene. We are still waiting to learn how exactly this all started. Well, a man is in the hospital after trying to chase down the suspect who stole his truck. Police tell us around 2.30 this morning, a man saw two suspects stealing his pickup at his apartment complex near McCullough and El Monte. The victim immediately jumped into his other vehicle and chased the suspects down. The two suspects noticed the man following them. They turned the pickup toward the victim and slammed into his SUV. The suspects jumped out of the pickup and fired several shots toward the victim. One grazed the victim in the head. He is expected to be okay. After the gunfire, the suspects ran off and police are still searching for him this morning. And speaking of police, SAPD and Crime Stoppers asking for your help trying to find a man who they say robbed a Home Depot on the city's northeast side last month. It happened April 27th at the Home Depot on Cambrai Drive. Police tell us that the man entered the store, threatened employees with a gun, stole multiple items. That suspect then took off in the white truck that you see on your screen. If you have any information that can help in the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 210-224-STOP. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Metro health officials are reporting 138 new COVID-19 cases and two more deaths. This brings our death toll to 3,459 people since the start of the pandemic. Metro Health is also reporting 145 people in our local hospitals with 49 in the ICU and 20 on ventilators. More than 718,000 people in Bear County are fully vaccinated. And taking a macro approach, the United States continues to make great progress vaccinating more and more Americans. About 166 million people, more than half the country's population, have now received at least one dose of the vaccine. Fresh data just released by the CDC also showing about 40% of Americans are fully vaccinated. Within those numbers, three quarters of seniors, people 65 and older, they are fully vaccinated. The percentage rising to 86% of seniors who have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is also giving the green light to Carnival Cruise Lines to set sail with passengers very soon. The CDC signed off on parts of the Carnival's plan to restart operations from three home ports in Texas and Florida, Port Miami, Port Canaveral, and Port of Galveston agreed to support the cruise company with additional public health resources. Carnival says they plan to put three ships in service by July, it's not clear if Carnival is going to start with volunteers or full sailings. Time now, 907, 67 degrees out. Well, if you're cooped up inside Ooh. because of the rain, you can check out today's episode of Texas Eats. We have a preview just ahead. I think yesterday was National Hamburger Day. I had a hamburger. Oh, nice. Got to celebrate. <laughs> All right, up next, a big important message from TxDOT. Fines and penalties you could face by not buckling up what you need to know about this year's click it or ticket campaign before hitting the road. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Those clouds still hanging around, but Sarah Spivey says this afternoon things should be nice and clear for the rain. She'll have our full weekend forecast when we come back. All right, good morning and welcome back. Before we hit the road today, we have some information you need to hear. Well, we've all heard about the click it or ticket campaign from TxDOT, but new stuff this morning. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, since it started in 2002, the initiative is estimated to have saved more than 6,000 lives and prevented more than 100,000 serious injuries. That's right. However, as Stephen Cavazos reports, the latest numbers show the past few months have not been a good time on the roads for our Texas drivers. 
Despite a drop in the number of traffic crashes throughout the year, TxDOT says 2020 saw a spike in the number of fatalities overall and deaths of people in Texas from not wearing a seatbelt. That's why TxDOT is reminding everyone that buckling up is the best defense in a crash. Last year, the simple act of buckling up saved many Texans from death or serious injury in crashes. Unfortunately, there was still a 16% increase in deaths of unbuckled motorists. There were more than 1,000 deaths in 2020 and more than 900 in 2019 due to people not wearing seatbelts. Putting on a seatbelt only takes a few seconds and doing so reduces the risk of dying by up to 45% for people in front seat of passenger cars and up to 60% for people in pickup trucks. Research shows pickup truck drivers and passengers continue to lag in seatbelt use. Close to half of all pickup drivers killed in crashes last year in Texas were not wearing a seatbelt. In order to encourage safety from now on, from now until June 6, that is, Texas officers and deputies will be stepping up enforcement of the state's seatbelt and child car seat laws. This is in response to the summer driving season starting and families heading out for Memorial Day activities. A reminder that Texas law requires everyone in a vehicle to be properly secured in the front or back seat or face fines and fees up to $200. Children younger than eight years old must be restrained in a child safety seat or booster seat unless they are taller than four feet nine inches. Now, if a child isn't secure, the driver does face fines up to $250. So no matter what you drive or where you're driving, remember to buckle up. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And this morning on my drive into work, I saw a lot of cars pulled over, yeah. Sarah, because the roads were so wet. Thankfully, it's starting to clear up out there. Things are clearing up for us, but what we're left with is a picture like this. What you see behind me, this picture sent in from our very own Adam Cassie uh, this morning out Hebner at 1604 area. You can see that that tree limb has fallen off, and we all know from experience that there's been bigger trees that have tumbled uh, this morning out in uh, Alamo Heights, Alicia Barrera was showing us a tree that fell through someone's roof. So unfortunately, it looks like for some there's going to be quite the cleanup uh, from yesterday's winds, which gusted up to 70 to 77 miles per hour. So a very, very busy uh, night last night. And even this morning, it was fairly busy with some moderate rain, some thunder or early in the pre dawn hours. But as you can see, thunder and lightning have come to an end. And what we're left with is just a little bit of light rain left in the area, uh, mainly for areas east of 281 right now. Some light rain near Adkins, St. Hedwig, Lone Oak, Martinez, China Grove, uh, and just west of Windcrest. Some light rain also near Garden Ridge area and up toward uh, just the Bear County and Comal County line there. Uh, through Canyon Lake, we've got some light rain near Smithson Valley, near Startsville, uh, near West Haven and Mission Shores at Canyon Lake as well. But again, these are clearing out. Uh, a little bit further south though, we do have some more moderate rain near Carnes City and Kennedy and Carnes County, uh, but we are just about done for the rain for really honestly the majority of the day. But it's been impressive rainfall. And in fact, I want to show you rainfall totals just within the last 24 hours here. Uh, many areas seeing at least one to two inches of rain, especially north of Highway 90. A couple of these neighborhoods like Stone Oak uh, seeing up to about two and a half inches of radar indicated rainfall near Bulverde, up to two and a half inches as well near Fair Oaks Ranch and Scenic Oaks area. And then even at the airport, the official reading in the last 24 hours has been a little bit more than two, uh, an inch and a half rather of rainfall. Elsewhere, if you didn't get the two inches of rain, you at least got anywhere from half an inch to an inch of rainfall, as you can see around Bear County. So I know we're sick and tired of the rain. The good news is a lot of the this fell on the Edwards Aquifer Recharge Zone and uh, the contributing zones as well, which falls into the recharge zone, up to five inches of rain in spots near Kerrville. So all in all, some healthy rainfall for us that we'll be grateful for in the summer months. Unfortunately, it just came with uh, that severe weather. There's some clear sky at Kerrville. It's sunny there right now, sunny in Bandera and sunny in Sisterdale. We're going to see this move on through and by probably honestly by about noon, we're going to have have a lot of good sunshine around San Antonio uh, this uh, Memorial Day weekend. So good riddance to the rain. Uh, if you have travel plans, the Rio Grande Valley is going to be the area where we're going to have a lot of rain today. That does include South Padre Island, Corpus Christi getting some rain as well. The beach is there, but Galveston looks all right. Uh, so if you have any uh, 
coastal plans. That's just a little preview for you. There you can see the sun on the horizon, 66 degrees with a little bit of light rain still being reported at the airport. But on the future cast, you can see what I mean. We're going to have clearing skies by about lunch. We can't rule out one or two isolated showers or storms this afternoon, but the chance for rain is only 20%. It'll be a toasty day with temperatures climbing up to 84 degrees uh, for the high temperature, 91 in Del Rio, 93 in Laredo. But that 84 is going to feel a lot lot more like 90 because of the high humidity. East winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour today. All in all, a pretty nice Saturday, but the humidity is going to be with us all weekend long. In fact, all week long, we're going to be uh, seeing dew points in the 70s. Bad hair day. And you're going to feel all of that humidity out there, uh, but at least it's going to be a, a fairly dry Memorial Day weekend, a uh, weekend which we remember those who have sacrificed their lives for our country. Uh, we are going to enjoy some nice weather, uh, just a little humid with an isolated shower or storm here and there. And of course, we're going to keep you updated all weekend long. Uh, scattered chairs and storms, though, return to the forecast as we start June. So. May was rainy. We've seen more than five inches of rain and June's going to start fairly rainy as well. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 917, 67 degrees out. Well, if you've never hunted before, Texas Parks and Wildlife has a new program that's starting soon that will show you everything you need to know. Still ahead, details on the program along with the chance to win big in gift cards and other prizes. All right, plus, oh, look at that. Yeah. Kind of celebrating. National Burger Day. We have Texas Eats. We got a spicy hatch pepper cheeseburger. I'm in. Ah, oh, it's too much. No. <laughs> All right. Never know. Three eight three six Fireball Seven Daily Four Five Zero Seven Eight Fireball Five. All right. Cash Five Four Twelve Fourteen Fifteen Thirty Five. There we go. Mega Millions Two Hundred Fifty Three Million Dollars on the line. No, Ten. That that was the other one. Anyway, oh, okay. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> 10, 14, 20, 47, 70. Big number 15, Megaplier 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Max, what day is it? It is Saturday, so what does that mean? I don't know, Max. <laughs> <laughs> it means that we are giving you a preview of today's special episode of Texas Eats starting right after our show, 10 a.m. And this morning's clip, David Elder shows us a spicy hatch pepper cheeseburger. Mm. This one's really fun. It's a seasonal burger, right? Because you got some hatch peppers in there. We're really excited. We connected with a gentleman out of uh, New Mexico who sells us authentic hatch chilies. If you love hatch peppers or you look forward to hatch pepper season, over here at Mr. Juicy off menu, you can get the hatch burger. We've got white cheese on there, white cheddar. Uh, we've got hatch chili that's mixed with a little bit of honey and salt. We've got apple smoked bacon. And we've got our Angus patty with a chipotle mayo on a toasted halibut. That bacon is where it's at now. It was an elbow. <laughs> it's just a really good blend of that saltiness you're getting from the bacon and that spiciness that you're getting from that hatch pepper. This, it actually has a, a good level of spice to it, but the bacon and the cheese together, it really just adds this whole dimension that you're creating this, this new flavor profile with those hatch peppers. I'm in. What are your thoughts? Uh, you know, it looks delicious. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my stomach would agree with it <laughs> afterwards, but sometimes you got to take the plunge. You got to do it. The bun looks fantastic. I know. All right. Time now, 923, 67 degrees out. Well, showing some thanks for a family member, friend, or loved one that has served our nation after the break, how their picture could be featured. Good morning and welcome back. Do you have a family member, a friend, or a loved one who has served our country? Well, KSAT invites you to upload a picture of your hero to our community gallery to be recognized on KSAT.com. So you can upload those pictures by visiting the community gallery section of our website. Once they have been approved, they will appear. This is just a small way you can give thanks to those who have sacrificed for our freedom. That is right, and that's what this weekend is all about. Mm -hmm. All right, time now is just about 927, 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, millions of people are traveling for Memorial Day weekend. Details on what you can expect if you plan on flying. Last night, storms causing major headaches for some homeowners in Alamo Heights this morning. Just ahead on GMSA, we show you some of those damages. 
Good morning. Welcome back. 930 this Saturday, May 29th. Thank you so much for joining us. We know a lot of people got a late start this morning. Yeah. Up late, you had thunder, you had lightning, rain, wind, wind of up to 77 miles per hour. Yeah, in some areas uh, like the airport, let's take a look at these power outages. So this is actually good news. 9,399 customers with 453 active outages. Last night, it was around 30,000. Earlier this morning, it was, you know, in the high 20,000. So CPS Energy working around the clock to get those outages restored, uh, to get those power outages restored. And Sarah Spidey. And you can see the yeah. areas of the neighborhoods. So you see Alamo Heights there in that mm -hmm. purple. That means a lot of customers around Alamo Heights are without power. Uh, and uh, right along the west of the Castle Hills area, that's where a lot of people are without power as well. In Alamo Heights, we know that there are uh, quite a few trees down that likely are creating more of a headache for uh, CPS workers there as they try to restore the power. But again, an improvement from last night where 34,000 people we're without power. We'll continue to keep you updated. You can keep a, a track of those CPS outages on KSAT.com as well. But the rain has started to come to an end, and I know a lot of people are traveling. Airport delays around some local airports, no delays uh, as a whole around San Antonio. I'm sure there are some isolated flights here or there that are experiencing some delays. Houston Bush looks good as well. Dallas, Fort Worth, Chicago, JFK, and Los Angeles. Those major airports are doing just fine. Uh, and the roads look okay too. Just a little damp in spots. This is 35 at Pine. What an improvement from last night's Transguide images. Last night, with the Transguide images, those winds were gusting up to 70, 75 miles per hour. That's faster than hurricane strength winds. Category one hurricane strength, the low end category one hurricane. And so we were seeing uh, rain going sideways across some of these Transguide images. But as you can see, that's 410 San Pedro. Everything is smooth, uh, flowing smoothly. A lot of people out in the roads uh, traveling for the extended weekend and the rain is coming to an end and we'll really only be left with a few isolated showers here and there into the afternoon. New Braunfels Canyon Lake still seeing some sprinkles and some light rain. It'll be coming to use again as well, but unfortunately the rain has also made the mold high. Uh, mold is high today in today's pollen count 8680 mold spores per cubic meter of air. The downside to good rain and of course the downside also being uh, the uh, severe weather that we experienced last night with those power outages and trees down in many spots. A lot of cleaning up to do in the city. Uh, we'll come back and talk about uh, some the rainfall totals around the area. But Max, I believe that we're going to talk about some of the damage in the area. That's right. I've been saying a lot of people in and around San Antonio still feeling the effects, still seeing the effects of the storms. As we've been saying, a little more than 9,000 people still without power. A lot of people waking up to deal with repairs. And Alicia Beretta is live in Alamo Heights where one home sustained some serious damage, a tree through the roof. Alicia. Hey, good morning. Well, let me tell you about the homeowner. She was sleeping in her bedroom here and then heard something fall, then saw a tree limb go through the roof uh, and she saw it from her bedroom. She was about five feet away. She is okay, obviously super shaken up. But let me tell you, the community here at Alamo Heights in this neighborhood, we're not far from Alamo Heights High School, has really just rallied together to try to help her and figure things out. Um, this is the damage that we're looking at this morning. This is what she has to deal with. But the good news is that we did have a viewer, Isaiah Vidales. He's the owner of Isaiah Home and Garden Landscaping. They just coordinating the whole thing, but he's gonna come out here and help this family clean up this mess and I wanted to show you exactly how that tree just lifted up we see some of the roots of this Spanish oak tree that was a hundred feet tall just kind of sticking over up there on the uh, in the neighbor's side of the home so they tell me that about two years ago when they moved over here they really wanted to get rid of this tree try to figure out what to do with it but it wasn't possible and this is definitely not the way they expected for this tree to go uh, but again they're also dealing with a lot of issues they tell me that they had to cut off their water to prevent flooding and they believe that the homeowner over here who is um, facing a lot of damage that their home may be flooded that's something that we're still trying to get confirmed but again um, this is kind of what you see around this area in Alamo Heights when we're driving through a lot of just tree limbs uh, branches 
scattered out through the ground. Um, and it was a scary situation, very close call, but thankfully no injuries reported here this morning. Uh, family really thankful that they're okay. Obviously material damage is gonna cost a lot. Um, insurance should be hopefully taking a look at this home and trying to see the, um, or trying to determine an estimate for damages. So again, it's gonna be a long road for this family and any other homeowners out there who experience some serious damage. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. And all our viewers, just keep posting those pictures to our KSAT Weather Authority app in the pin section and show us if you have any damage this morning. That's right. And we have news into the newsroom right now. New Braunfels Police Department posting on social media. Heavy rains prompting temporary closure of Comal River. Heavy rains overnight causing an increased flow of water. So therefore, they are temporarily closing it for recreation. So if you did have plans to go out there, start the weekend, it is closed for at least today, so we're going to keep you posted. Make sure to stay with us online and on air as we get more details into the closure. Absolutely. Well, a mother and her young child are in the hospital this morning after a head-on collision. The driver believed to be responsible detained for a possible DWI. Police were called out to the crash near the intersection of Gavis and Zerzamara around 11 p.m. Police tell us two pickup trucks were in a minor accident, I-35. One was a Ford pickup, which took off, turned on Zarzamora, lost control and veered off into oncoming traffic. The driver crashed into another vehicle head on. A mother and her small child were both taken to University Hospital. At last check, the mother was in critical condition and her son was in stable condition. The driver was detained under the suspicion of alcohol. Charges are pending. It didn't end there, though. EMS was headed to the scene, lost control, and hit a fence. The two paramedics were also taken to University, University Hospital for evaluation. And police searching for a person responsible for a shooting that ended with four people with gunshot wounds. Police tell us two of those people shot were killed. So this was the scene around 2.40 this morning. This is the 3300 block of Fallen Leaf Lane. Police Chief William McManus says reports of a shooting between two vehicles on I-10, four people in one of the cars that were shot, two of those people shot died. Police tell us the car ended up crashing on Fallen Leaf Lane. The crime scene spread throughout several blocks. Going as far back as I-10, the shooter in another vehicle drove off. Police still investigating, trying to figure out how and why this all started. And with the pandemic easing up, travelers aren't just returning to the roads and expected record number of people taking to the skies this holiday weekend. ABC's Trevor Halt is in LaGuardia Airport with the story. This morning, millions of Americans taking off. People are trying to get back to normal. It's been a year since a lot of people have like been out and about. The holiday rush likely to break pandemic travel records. The TSA projected to screen more than 6 million passengers through the weekend. Oh, I think it's wonderful. We're both vaccinated, so that's why we decided to travel. I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same way as we are. And airline companies have been gearing up for the holiday surge. American says all of its planes are now out of storage and flying this weekend, while Delta says it expects flights to be 80 to 90 percent full. And United CEO Scott Kirby touting a stunning travel rebound to Argio Benitez. Do you think that you may see more leisure travelers than perhaps ever before? Yeah, we already are. Uh, I, in the, leisure travel domestically for United Airlines is, is higher than it was pre-pandemic. But also worryingly on the rise are acts of in-flight violence. This passenger knocking out the teeth of a flight attendant last Sunday. On top of potential felony charges, Southwest has banned that passenger from flying with them ever again. And the airlines now postponing the return of alcohol on board their flights, citing the recent uptick in industry-wide incidents of passenger disruptions in flight. The Homeland Security Secretary vowing to crack down. Violence um, against a flight attendant uh, on a flight is a um, is a federal offense, and uh, those cases are going to be prosecuted. We will not tolerate that. And we never thought it would feel like good news to say this, but so many people are traveling that in many airports there are now lines, occasionally lengthy lines. So if you are traveling this weekend, it's a good idea to give yourself some extra time. Trevor Alt, ABC News, LaGuardia Airport. We also want to let you know it's tax-free weekend for many energy and water-saving items. Today through Monday, you can save on sales tax on a new fridge, 
dishwasher, washing machine, dryer, or even a new faucet. And in the outdoor section, mulch, soil, compost, also part of the deal. There are some specifics, though, depending on what you're buying. Refrigerators must be under $2,000. A new AC unit needs to be under $6,000. You can find all that information right now on our website at ksat.com. All right, after the rain passes over San Antonio, you may need a car wash. That is why the wash tub will be giving away free full service car washes to all veterans, including active and retired military. The service will be offered all of Memorial Day weekend, including Monday. The wash tub's full service car wash includes vacuum, wash, dry, and a complete wipe down inside. They have 25 locations spread throughout San Antonio and our surrounding areas. You can visit their website, washtub.com, if you have any questions or if you are interested. Time now is 941, 67 degrees out. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department wants to help beginner hunters get started by offering a chance to win a mentored hog hunt. Mm. Just ahead, RJ Marquez tells us about the program and how you can take part. And Rodney Hunter, star on and off the court, in and out of the classroom, but this past year really testing tenacity and perseverance of Rodney up next. What makes his story of success special and who he says has inspired him to help others. 67 degrees at 941 this morning with live cam. Look, the sun's starting to peek Whoa. out. What a beautiful sight after kind of rough night in our city. Sarah Spivey will have our Memorial Weekend forecast when we come back. Well, this last year has been a whirlwind for so many reasons and students across the country and across the world have had to overcome obstacle after obstacle to succeed. That's right. In this morning's great graduate segment, we are introducing you to Rodney Hunter of St. Mary's Hall, who continues to thrive. It's been difficult, been really weird. Meet Rodney, a star on and off the basketball court. But this past year with everything going on has really tested his tenacity and his perseverance. It's difficult to watch, you know, because of it's been going on for so many years, but it, it, it really hit home because, you know, my parents, um, their parents, and they've all seen similar stuff like this. And it, it, um, it really affected me because of how my parents thought about it. When Rodney isn't focused on his game, his grades, or his time with St. Mary's Hall Investing Club, he's working to help out others. I'm blessed, and a lot of people don't have what I have. So I always like to, to, to do my best to give back to the people who are, you know, not as blessed as me. Part of what inspires him is his family, specifically his mother. She is now the CEO of San Ministries, a nonprofit here in San Antonio, but it wasn't always like that. And his family is what pushes him to be better. I'm the oldest sibling, so it puts pressure on me to, you know, be the example for my three younger ones, you know. I want them to be better than what I am, so I have to show them what it takes to be better than what I am. Rodney continues to set the bar high. He is set to take his talents to Kerrville. Next year, I am gonna attend Shriner University. Um, I'm gonna play basketball and major in data analytics. And big shout out to Rodney. I mean, he could not miss when we were shooting around. He was wearing loafers and he hit like seven of seven three. It was talent right there. <laughs> very impressive. But he also tells me as far as his future goes, he loves math. He is looking at forensic accounting and data analytics. So very smart guy, just like our own Sarah Spivey. A lot going on in the weather recently. Oh my goodness. Thanks for the compliment. But yeah, <laughs> a lot going on with the weather. And unfortunately, a lot of people are left cleaning up the mess from the severe weather last night. Uh, look at this picture sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. You can actually drop pins and show us what you're seeing uh, at your home. This is near the Castle Hills area. A fallen tree in the street and not just a flimsy tree, mind you. This is a fully mature, very large tree. Uh, last Last night, there were wind reports of 77 miles per hour. To put that into perspective uh, for you, a Category 1 hurricane becomes a hurricane when it hits 74 miles per hour. So we were seeing some hurricane force strength winds briefly uh, as far as those gusts go. Again, that gust recorded at the airport. It was loud. There was tons of lightning and those winds were definitely uh, formidable as you can see there as that tree has fallen. Uh, but uh, we did get some good rain. Uh, this is a look at 24 hour uh, rainfall just over the last 24 hours. Anywhere you see this yellow color 
like on northern Bear County, that's going to be at least two inches of radar indicated rain, at least two inches of radar indicated rain for the Stone Oak area near Johnson High School and Reagan High School uh, near Bulverde, near Fair Oaks Ranch, near Silver Hills. And anywhere you see these, this dark green color is at least an inch and a half of radar indicated rain along I-10 up uh, toward Seguin. And at the airport, officially more than an inch and a half in the last 24 hours. Uh, this bullseye of uh, red and orange color, that is the uh, contributing zone of the Edwards Aquifer. And so we're already seeing the aquifer do good things rising, and it's probably going to rise even more. We'll go ahead and change back over to the radar so that you can see that things are clearing out for us very quickly. Just some light rain left over in Guadalupe and Comal counties. By the way, New Braunfels PD again announcing that the Comal River is temporarily closed because of the high water flow through the Comal River. So if you had plans to tube along the Comal, now, not going to happen today, unfortunately. No news yet on the Guadalupe. Uh, we do have some leftover showers in Live Oak County, so the Corpus Christi area getting some rain if you had plans to go out to Corpus uh, for uh, enjoying on the beach this weekend. Today is going to be a little iffy, but the next couple of days should be all right. Skies are clearing. We're seeing skies clear on the northwestern portion of Bear County. It's sunny in Kerrville, sunny in Lakey. Sunny in Rock Springs and in Del Rio, where there was quite a bit of rain overnight, but still cloudy for most of our viewing area. You can see the sun. There it is. It's nice to see those clearing skies. 66 degrees at the airport uh, and on the future cast again, skies are clearing and this afternoon is going to be toasty uh, highs in the 80s, but we could have one or two isolated pop up showers and I say toasty. The 80s usually we don't think of that as toasty, but Keep in mind that it's going to feel five to seven degrees warmer than that because of the high humidity. 91 for the high in Del Rio. Again, here in San Antonio, we'll be looking at a high temperature of 84 degrees today. East winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Memorial Day weekend is going to be mostly dry after these morning storms that we've seen earlier. We're only going to have a chance for an isolated shower or storm every afternoon. Morning clouds, some afternoon sun, 20% chance isolated. 85 degrees for the high both tomorrow and Monday. But Remember, the humidity will be high. We'll be looking at an active weather pattern again Tuesday and Wednesday. So we've seen more than five inches of rain at the airport this May. It's been a very active May, and it looks like June is going to start off with a chance for storms as well. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 950, 67 degrees out. Are you looking for a new adventure? How about learning how to hunt? Up next, we'll tell you about a brand new program for beginning hunters that even includes a chance to win gift cards and prizes from the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Good morning and welcome back. If you're looking for a new reason to get outdoors and get a good, fresh piece of meat, well, hunting. <laughs> Okay. Texas could be your next hobby. All right, and even if you've never hunted before, Texas Parks and Wildlife has a new program that's starting soon. that will show you everything you need to know. All right, RJ Marquez walking us through this program along with the chance to win big in gift cards and other projects. If you're interested in getting outside and harvesting your own food, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department wants to help you get started by offering a chance to win a mentored hog hunt. The program is guided by the Texas Wildlife Association. It's a state membership organization that serves Texas wildlife and its habitat. Even if the winner has never hunted before, professional guides will fully show the winner everything they'll need to know about hunting safely, including firearm safety. The hunt, which takes place over a weekend, will include lodging and meals for two on a private ranch in Texas. The winner will also receive $350 in gift cards from Game Guard Outdoors and Cabela's, as well as a subscription to the Texas Parks and Wildlife magazine. To enter the drawing, all you have to do is sign up for the Wild to Table email series for new hunters by May 31st. Texas Parks and Wildlife will provide the information you need to get started hunting, including information on hunter education requirements, how to buy a hunting license, and important hunting rules and regulations. Even if you don't win, anyone can learn more about wild game cooking, the knowledge and skills needed to hunt, places to hunt, and how hunting plays a role in wildlife conservation on the Hunting for Beginners page on the Texas Parks and Wildlife website. We've put a link to all that information on KSAT.com. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. I'm in. I'm, I'm I've, how to hunt. I've never hunted before. All right. Gotta Summer learn. sausage coming in. <laughs> 955, 67 degrees out.
Well, we have last, in the last year, we have seen so many protests, George Floyd movement, the pandemic. That is why in leading essay at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, city manager Eric Walsh joins us live to discuss. If you have any questions you would like to ask him, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section, ksat.com. In the news you need to know before you go, police searching for a person responsible for a shooting that left two people dead overnight. SAPD Chief William McManus says it happened around 2.40 this morning, 3300 block of Fallen Leaf Lane. Says there was reports of a shooting between two vehicles on I-10. Four people in one of those vehicles shot, two of them died. Police say the car ended up crashing on Fallen Leaf Lane. The shooting remains under investigation. Rain has come to an end in San Antonio, and that's welcome here after last night's storms. However, we do have a small chance, only 20% for an isolated shower storm for the remainder of Memorial Day weekend. Now, unfortunately, mold has climbed in today's pollen count because of the recent rains. And again, 20% chance for an isolated shower storm tomorrow on Memorial Day as well. And then we welcome back scattered showers and storms on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I say welcome back kind of sarcastically because we're ready for a break in the rain. Lots of rain. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 6 a.m. Have a good Saturday.